Enter the stars. Good morning, everyone. A lot of developments over the last 24 hours. And yesterday was the 111th day of the year. Remember, we're in a leap year. Normally, today is the 111th day of the year, April 21st. Talked a lot about, in the past, the mirror date of this day and yesterday. The mirror date, which is, of course, the day of the year where 111 days are left until the end of the year. And how those two dates, April 21st and the 11th day of September, are both mirror sisters of one another and synonymous. And this is why they choose these dates to do their dirty work, right? So, what happened yesterday? For many of you that are just tuning in this morning and haven't been on YouTube for 24 hours, oil fell through the floor fell below zero is what we're calling it now and why are we calling it below zero because of course this appears an ipad go to from 2012 here's fortune's headlines unreal oil prices go negative for the first time in history now we're going to get into what all this means for us as we begin to talk about some of this stuff so, what did we expect was going to happen when we cut demand for oil by forcing people to stay home and rarely use their cars? And now, everything begins to make sense. The curfews, social distancing, anything that could minimize the amount of driving being done and consolidate everything and just into just deliveries closing the beaches closing most stores to me it's all starting to make perfect sense what the world is really doing with this and now we know that oil is tied into the petrodollar is this it is this the final unraveling of american economy we're the ones that will suffer the most because our entire currency is tied into the petrodollar. So when the world's demand for oil suddenly stopped or was drastically reduced by 75%, what did we expect was going to happen? Now, I didn't anticipate this, but it made, it makes perfect sense. Everybody in the entire world is sitting in their houses, not burning fuel. Was it worth it? Was it worth it? And now we're hearing the hot mic, the guy admitting less than 0.1 to point to point one to point three percent on the hot mic, correcting the guy who walks into the room saying, We already got our VCs and so we're covered. And the guy's like, No, you don't even have to worry about those now. And then he asks it if it's a an HOAX. So, what's really going on here? Was it all worth it for what is now happening and what could happen to the American way of life? Now, what happens next? Well, it could all bounce back, I suppose. If you're a wishful thinker, if you're believing the plan and trusting the plan, that's what they're saying. Once they start easing up some of these restrictions, I guess you could see oil come back. It's possible that it will. And if you're a betting man, you're probably buying up as much of the, this oil as you can. You're probably cashed out your entire funds to buy oil stock right now because it's in the negatives. But if you're a betting man... And this was your plan. There's always that nagging feeling in the back of your mind. Wondering if things might not ever go back to normal. Now I don't bet on such things. Because what that involves is a level of faith in the beast system. If I'm going to bet on something it's going to be self-sufficiency. Some land. 
being outside of crowded areas where they can easily enforce any law they want. Curfews, rationing, whatever they want. They could actually take some of your food that you might have in abundance and redistribute it to other people. This is the kind of laws that they are talking about. It's written into the American law that they can do in times like this. But here we are, eight years later, after iPad Goat 2 that came out in 2012. And to me, what appears is a Trump mask, complete with the hair, the dwindling oil demand in the below zero landscape, which appears to mean something much different than the surface meaning. Because looking at what you're seeing on the left of your screen, oil should not be able to move in sub-zero temperatures it would be very viscous this is why the Alaskan pipeline has to be insulated and I believe parts of it are actually heated as it goes across the tundra very viscous they add things to it to move it through the pipes so I'm wondering if below zero actually means the price of oil below zero which is exactly what is happening let's look at this montage now i uploaded this in a premiere this morning it was too early for probably for most of you and that's okay but let's refresh this and play this this is crazy now of course this video will come under attack because people will say, oh, you're just seeing something that's not there. But you judge for yourself what you're looking at with what we're going through right now. Remember, always keep in mind, Trump is a very smart man. He knew that this would crash the petrodollar. He knew it. There's no other way around this. Now you have to ask yourself, who did he sell out to to allow this to happen? At the least, had America said, look, we're not going to buy into this whole CV thing. We're going to protect our interests in the petrodollar by not buying into this. And he could have even, if he was out for the people, could have even said, look, this is a play on our petrodollar. This is all made up. And you guys are just trying to crash our petrodollar by reducing demand across the world. And we're going to stand against you. Could have said that, right? I would start to believe in him at that point if he said such a thing. But instead, he played kind of right along with it. Made all of us stay home. Adding into the lack of demand, which is now causing what we're dealing with right now. Let's watch this short montage. I put together this montage so that you could see the screenshot from my pet goat, which I so many spent so many hours over the years staring at that scene and trying to understand what it meant this is it here and in the background they actually show and you can't really see it here but these are oil wells pumping oil and as you see the demand for oil just dwindle into just drops and the sub-zero landscape this was 2012 and look, even as it transitions to the next scene, you can almost see what appears to be two eyes appear in exactly the spot. See the two eyes here, these two lights. Well, as our liberties are being have been lost, the torch of freedom is now lost as we have been confined to our homes. See? And this is also called a unicursal hexagram we're gonna get into that a little bit later in the show this was on the microphone of lady gaga all together at home right there's the torch of freedom being lost and then i did this overlay showing what appears to me here you can see the two eyes the bridge of the nose and trump's signature swooping hair as the oil drops off of his forehead, just like the sweat dropped off of Obama's forehead earlier in iPad Goat. Do you see now the 
comparison of those two things. Remember the sweat dropped off of Obama's forehead and the oil is dropping off of Trump's forehead. The mask is now being revealed because this all is about weakening America. How do you weaken America? You weaken the foundation of America, which is the petrodollar, which is exactly what's happening right now. This will change our way of life. You can expect that. Not because of your investment. You and I don't invest in oil. But the people above us, the companies, the corporations, all these billionaires and millionaires, and even hundred thousandaires, invest in oil because this, we've long been told that this is like gold. The oil standard is very similar to the gold standard. Now, some people believe that this is a good thing, right? It's great, right? Gas should be super cheap right now. Right? And we're sticking it to all the billionaire investors, right? And everything's going to be great because gas is going to be going to be cheap. Wrong. Our entire t economy is tied to oil. This is bad for everything. Even if this thing lasts for even just a few weeks. And the savings, if you're thinking, you know, oil is at negative right now. So you'd think, oh, we're going to get some savings passed along onto us, right? They won't be passed on to the pump in any way, major way. Because there is a minimum cost associated with bringing that oil to that gas station in the form of gas refining and all these things that need to happen and the gas station still has to turn a profit and the cost to refine all this and get it to the gas station is a lot higher than it used to be why because of inflation you also have a lot more taxes that have been attached to gas over the decades that didn't used to be there when you went to the pump decades ago to get some gas it was mostly just the gas now there's taxes this is very true for places like california where a very large percentage of the price per gallon that you pay is actually a tax so that will never go away and all this translates into a minimum floor price that gas can never go under. My guess is it's probably about a dollar a gallon. A dollar to two dollars a gallon. So, I guess we're all going to have to just see what happens, right? I don't have a crystal ball, nor do I want one. We're not supposed to try to predict the future. What I try to show you on here is that investing in this world, you're always going to lose. And that's biblical. So, on to other things. As we continue this live show, make sure we're connected up and there are no problems in the chat. Let's see here. I wanted to talk to you guys about homeschooling. Now, this is crazy. Just before all this happened, the Kuru Rona, right? Homeschooling trends were surging through the roof. Public schools are basically bleeding out. They didn't know what to do. What are you going to do? More and more people are homeschooling. Every child that goes to school means money for the school. This is why they're so serious about truancy, right? Check out these articles. Homeschooling. In the digital age is steadily growing in popularity. Here's why you might consider turning your own living room into a classroom. Recent data uh, collected by the U.S. Department of Education shows that homeschooling has grown by 61% over the last decade. Money right out of the pockets of public schools. Now, I'm not saying this is why this all happened, but you got to follow the money with this stuff, you guys. you got to look at what is really going on? Here they talk about 
Americans are rejecting the homeschool myth, and experts say the misunderstood education might be better than public or charter schools. So, they were trying to hide it on the internet during Betsy DeVos' recent three-hour confirmation hearing to become pre President Donald Trump's education secretary. This lady's in with the Koch brothers. We did a story on that in the toilet paper in Trump's cabinet. Charter schools came up no fewer than 60 times. Homeschooling was mentioned once. So, what's well, her job? Her job is to keep kids in school. She doesn't want to talk about homeschooling. See how this is not what's best for your kids? This is about money. It's about keeping kids in their system. If they wanted what was best for kids, see the hypocrisy here. If they wanted what was best for kids, they would have been doing what they're now forcing us all to do through mandatory homeschooling, right? If it was such a bad idea, why are they doing it now? You know, how often do kids come home with illnesses and infect the whole family, right? Now, all of a sudden, they're on it. No, they're not. And I'm going to explain why. So, homeschooling is on the rise, growing in popularity. And the education system is bleeding out, literally. They don't have the students that they need. That they want. So here, here it is again. The U.S. Department of Education shows that homeschooling has grown by 61.8% over the last decade. Two million children, or 4% of the total youth population, are homeschooled. And this is like wildfire. So what's, what happens is, as more parents talk about this, and you know, you have more, uh, you know, less VC kids uh, who are healthy running around who are well adjusted who are more family orientated and parents start to see that more and more parents start to want to do this if it's at all possible so they didn't want this going out of control because then you'd have a bunch of empty schools right so what happened when public school was forced into the homeschooling model. Well, in business, we call this a hostile takeover or a copyright infringement. It's when a large corporation or entity uses their influence and power to try and overrun a business model that they see working for another company. And they do this in order to reap some of the profits of that business model. And their hope is to drown out that competition and adopt it as their own model. This is what's really happening right now. And, you know, their, their sales point is, why homeschool when you can just have public school at home? Homeschooling has costs. And public homeschooling doesn't. Because you're already paying for it in your taxes. You see how this works? But here's the problem. Public school costs have undoubtedly gone way, way down as a result of all these students staying home, right? You got students distance learning at home and that continues to fund the public school at full cost with their participation because they get paid per students. But here's the problem. Your taxes won't go down. I guarantee it. And you just got stuck with the bill for child care. That normally you wouldn't have to pay because your child would be, quote unquote, in school. And this is why you always have to follow the money. Now, we'll see how long all this goes on. But if they try to adopt this as the new normal moving forward, remote learning... This is going to decimate the middle class once again. Just in child care, uh, child care costs alone, this will decimate the middle class. We're talking an additional $600 to $1,000 a month out of your budget for your child to be at home somewhere being remote learned, right? You're going to start seeing abuse go up. Why? Because many parents are going to not be able to afford 
this. And you're going to have watch key kids who are just at home unsupervised at 10 years old. Opening them up to anything. So, way to go. Maybe this was the cost that Trump was talking about. The human cost. Now you've got these, what are these called? These um, programs that the, the children are using to remote learn, right? you got to have an app. And these apps are getting hacked. So you've got predators running around hacking. And they know that the child is home alone. Do you see how this can all snowball out of control? So let's go back in the chat real quick and I want to finish off the show today with just a follow up on Lady Gaga's microphone. Now, I got trolled yesterday. It wasn't very nice. They're like, this is, you know, you lose your credit. This is what they said. You lose your credibility when you talk about stuff like Lady Gaga's microphone, which you can all see on the left of your screen. All microphones are like that. Yes, many of them are. It's called a shock mount. And you're just seeing what you want to see. Well, nothing could be further from the truth. And why can I say that with confidence? I can say that because the Bible tells us the devil rules this world. Anything with any power and influence is controlled by the devil. He doesn't let anybody through his little glass ceiling because he's a micromanager and he can't stand it. When somebody has power and control, he has to shut it down or try to buy that person out. So what Lady Gaga had on her little microphone is called a shock mount. And early microphone shock mounts, what this does, it reduces extra sound because it basically levitates this microphone in the air, kind of. So any vibrations get absorbed by this shock mount. Now early shock mounts did look nothing like this. These are spring shock mounts. See? See the difference? So this doesn't have to be the design. It's the design that they decided to use. Why? Because this is the curse. What are you talking about, Casey? This is called a unicursor, uner, unicursal hexagram. Let's take a look. It is a star. And how do you deliver a curse? Through your voice. The unicursal hexagram. You got two words in there that I don't like very much. The curse and the hexagram. Loaded with occult sim symbolism. This is Pascal's theorem, and he makes a mathematical equation out of the unicursal hexagram, which is also known as the cat's cradle. This was Aleister Crowley's little joke in his secret. He loved this shape because unicursal means that you can draw it all in one line. And when the cat's in the cradle, he can't escape. You're in a trap. So this is it, Pascal's Theorem Hexagramum Mysticum. So, Mr. Troll, don't come on here and tell me that I'm reading things into things that aren't there, because it's all there. Let's keep going with this, because there's more. So, Pascal made a basically a mathematical equation of the cat's cradle cradle and many of you played that game with a string had no idea how evil it was till now but that's what's going on with this shape it's also called the aquarian star let's take a look at the shape now just so i'm clear they refer to the shock mount as a cat's cradle. It's right there in their little Wikipedia article. 
Let's scroll down here. Here's the ring spring mount. They call it right here. Cat's cradle mount. So you know I'm not making this up. Okay. It delivers the curse. Because it's unicursal. Right. Here's the Aquarian star. Here's from Supernatural. There it is again. It's all about the curse. Let's pull this up a little bit. The Aquarian star is a symbol used to signify membership in the men of letters. It is a six-pointed sign that represented great power. It represented the gates of Atlantis. Henry Winchester wears one as a tie pin. Why would he wear it on his tie? Well, right above your tie is your throat. It's your voice box so you could deliver the curse, right? Let's keep going with this. It's also seen as the gravestones of those killed by Abaddon. Uh, oh, look at that name popped up again. A bad dawn. Mark the door to their secret meeting place and decorates the box holding the key to the bunker. Talk about blood spells and all this stuff. Now, I don't watch these shows. These really dark in depth because it's just so obvious, right? But for the purposes of, of this morning show, I wanted to show you that this is not, we're not, just didn't make that up about her microphone. There's a very deliberate reason why this was set up this way on the microphone, okay? Now, I'm not saying that every person that uses this shock mount, because there are a lot of YouTubers that have these big microphones, these big fancy $500 microphones, they use the very same shock mount. That doesn't automatically mean that that person is evil. But we know that Lady Gaga has admitted her belief system and demonstrated it in her performance art. So there's your little information on that. What else do we have here? Let's go back in the live show here. Oh, so it was weird. YouTube basically took down my own pinned comment on my own video. And I think that was probably because I put a link in there about Charlie Chaplin and his preference towards children. This was a mainstream news article. It wasn't like some weird article. YouTube has a very bad habit of trying to hide the truth when it comes to exposing these kinds of people. So they took it down. I put it back up, but I left that link out, of course. And made an, a pretty amazing discovery. Someone actually commented on my channel and told me, Hey, Casey, you got to look at the movie The Howling from 1981. That was 39 years ago. And in that movie, there's a bunch of smiley faces. That the, 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 the uh, person in the movie, the perpetrator, he puts these smiley face stickers up as like his calling card. And it's basically an omen of evil. Well, that film came out on March 13th, Friday the 13th. The very same day that Trump declared a national state of emergency. Friday the 13th, March 13th, 2020. March 13th, Friday the 13th, 1981. The howling came out. And here we are, full circle, with smiley faces everywhere. Signaling an omen of evil. Evil. Now the Goonies was it the Goonies or G Gremlins? It was Gremlins. The Gremlins also has a cameo appearance of the smiley face. It's on a refrigerator. Many of you will remember that film. How do I know that? Because I read it. And why do those two films have the smiley face? Because they're both produced by the same guy, and he dropped that little smiley face in there to connect the two universes. They call it. These movie universes between Gremlins and the uh, the Howling. Now I started to watch that movie and it's pretty disgusting, the Howling, and uh, and it's kind of dumb too. But I wanted to try to watch it for clues. I got about a third of the way through it and I just put it down. But this smiley face code we have cracked. It is. The eclipse that occurred on December 26, 2019 marked the beginning of everything that kicked off that we're going through right now. 
we saw the smiley face again in a scene in the film 2012 did we not when he enters the rv and on the side of the refrigerator remember on the refrigerators right just like in gremlins they put the, there's a smiley face on the side of the refrigerator as woody harrelson is explaining the end of the economies of the world in the film 2012 so the smiley face is real the eclipse form the mouth of the smiley face with the eyes forming the two lakes in Russia and this is all about sun worship the day after Apollo Abaddon's birthday the day after his birthday this eclipse appeared smiling underneath China you can't make this up you guys you can't make it up so we saw the smiley face now back during the Obama presidency we mapped out all of the different things that happened in schools did we not we mapped them out all across America there were like 50 or 60 events that happened in schools we mapped them all out and it formed a giant smiley face and I remember looking at it going that's a smiley face people are like you're crazy well all these presidents are involved in this stuff that's the whole point that I try to make on this channel and show you none of them are on our side it's all about maintaining control so we'll see how all this oil thing pans out um look the best thing you can do use this opportunity of children being homeschooled use this as an opportunity to maybe make the leap and instead of enrolling your children in school and still paying those tax dollars well you're gonna have to pay them anyway right you don't get to opt out of that but you know you can make a statement you can definitely make a statement they don't get to double dip all right they don't get to double dip like that oh we'll just have your kids stay home and then you're still going to pay your taxes and we still get our money for your child being in school and we're going to foot you with the the uh the bill for having your child watched by somebody and supervised no they don't get to do that so i expect uh gas at the pump i mean i know i'm jumping around a little bit when i'm kind of reading your chat i expect gas at the pump to drop a little bit maybe 20 25 cents a gallon but it, it'll hit this floor that it won't go under and then you'll see everyone will be like why isn't our gas cheaper and then you're going to see inflation because that's just what happens when the when the gas prices are weak when the oil is weak we're going to see lots of inflation that's going to dovetail into all these checks that are being sent out more inflation and before we know it things are going to cost a lot more than they used to this is what other countries are going through as a result of sanctions that we've put on them they're experiencing similar things because we've basically blockaded them from the world economy so now we're going to get a little taste of it ourselves so that's what's going on now is every single thing that i'm saying going to happen i don't know that i don't know but you can't take the foundation of an economy and flush it down the toilet and not expect that you're not going to get affected by it personally it's going to happen you guys it's going to happen so that's about it appreciate everyone coming out tomorrow we're going to talk about the very few states that are standing up and not totally giving in to this agenda many of the, the these states have stores that are still open south dakota it's interesting a state that i'm particularly interested in that i was researching two months ago is one of those states that's standing up 
Arkansas. The Ark. The Ozarks. And uh, they're not completely giving in either. Now, I'm not telling everybody to move to Arkansas. Pretty soon there won't be anywhere to really hide. And there is a fine line. Trying to preserve your life, you may lose it. But then there's... Just beyond the gray area, there's a place called preparation and being prepared and listening to the still small voice when God tells you, oh, it might be time to move out of this city or oh, it might be time to change things in your life a bit. Okay, just like Noah did. He was mocked for 120 years while he's building this ark. Undoubtedly, family, friends mocked him. Made fun of him, threw stuff at him, laughed at him. What are you doing, you idiot? What is this thing you're talking about? Rain. We've never seen rain before. And they're like, you're telling us water's going to come out of the sky? You're crazy. But Noah listened to God. And the last days will be just like the days of Noah with mockers and scoffers. So you guys can laugh at me all you want. You can laugh all you want. Because at the end when the ark is sealed. And there is no more grace. And all that mocking and scoffing you did is on God's little scorecard. And that basically takes your key away to get into the ark your behavior toward the righteous people who are trying to help and that's when you'll realize when the rains start to come that it's already too late take care and be safe everybody have a great day